Hey, what's going on? <clears throat> Been a long time. Let me talk about um people biting my style. Now, you know, I've been saying for quite some time, I'm going to start cutting up the um, prime cuts again, putting those up on some lives that I uh, missed that people looked at. Clearly took inspiration from, but of course they don't give you the credit. And like I said, years ago when I was making videos, they will take your shit. Then if you mention where they got it from, the first thing that they're going to say is, who? Never heard of them. Why? Because the numbers. They look at the numbers. It's funny how my numbers are low, but people know who I am. I think that's kind of funny. As people say, make that make sense. Shouldn't have turned the damn car off. It's only according to the thing. It says 72 degrees. Now it's hot. Not that hot. But, um... Hold on a second. Now, for those who hate the sips, you know they're going to hate that. But I will. So, you know what they do when they still, they just say, I don't know who the person is, never heard of them. But see, in this case, it was Sir Ross Sutton Seti. Truth be told, you know, I, I followed him since the beginning. He was one of the first YouTubers. You know, he started on YouTube. I, I still think a lot of these guys are assigned to do what they do. <laughs> Because back when YouTube began, I wasn't thinking about making videos on YouTube. In fact, other people had to get me involved in YouTube. Because to be honest with you, I didn't think the shit was going to last long. be honest with you. <laughs> I said, it's a good idea. Now, I was busy getting videos and shit from other uh, arenas. And the way things are going now, you might have to go back to those arenas. But of course, they don't have what they used to have. Um, plus, you got, <clears throat> you know, all the censorship that's going on. So anyway, I find it funny that some people don't get censored, but, you know, it is what it is. So anyway, you know some of my topics that's unique to me. One of the main ones is... Matter of fact, before I get to that, <laughs> um, let me say, number one, Fat Man Scoop died. I, I could have sworn he died a few times. It seemed like they said he died a few times. Man. I, I swear to you. It's crazy. But what also died, again, is 98.7 New York. It was ESPN. Those of us grew up, uh, you know, 98.7 Kiss. And a lot of us didn't like the fact that that got rebranded. I still say it's a conspiracy to get rid of R&B. They say that R&B numbers aren't what they used to be. And, and people don't like R&B. Right, that's bullshit. They've been dumbing down, giving us bullshit singers with a point to the point where Bruno Mars was the best singer <laughs> out or something like that. You know, they don't have that variety like uh, the 70s, 80s, 60s, 50s. Where it was nothing but powerful soul singers. They just want to suppress it because nobody can do it like we can do it. That's why. So. You had. 98.7 Kiss, you know, DJ Red, cool DJ Red Alert, Jeff Fox and all them were doing their thing. Then ESPN bought that out, turned it into a talk radio sports show. 
I ain't even watch, uh, listen to it for the longest time because I'm like, man, damn. Now I admit, <laughs> before they switched it over, I wasn't exactly listening to Kiss like that at that time. But still, <laughs> that's what it was known as. And I'm sure a lot of people remember the uh, commercials back in the day, too. So, you know, rest in peace to Kiss FM. And now rest in peace to uh, 98.7 ESPN. Because they went off the air on the 31st. And they, I guess they purchased uh, uh, 880 <coughs> AM WCBS. Which was from listening to the station because I started listening to them because they said that's where they were going to be at. So I said, let me program this shit now before I forget about it. So started listening and they were talking about they've been around since the 1920s or something. I'm like, God damn. I said, ESPN fuck up Kiss. Now they fucking up a station that's been around since the 20s. I said, damn. What are they going to fuck up next? <laughs> I mean, damn. They were playing sound bites from when they were talking about Babe Ruth and shit. I said, damn. World War One, World War Two. Or World War Two. That's that's a long a lot of history, man. For a goddamn sports station. But you know, they sold the uh license to KISS because or to ninety eight seven because you know, radio licenses cost a lot of money, especially in New York, the biggest market. So you got to get rid, you know, cut your losses. Let somebody else take care of the uh, the hard work. So they changed it over to a pop type station. So <laughs> TJ, 98.7 TJ, whatever the fuck that, I don't even know what the hell it's supposed to mean. I'm sure it must be tied to one of the biggest... Uh, radio operators in the country. So I'm like, I was listening to it. I was like, damn, this shit really went off. I said, that shit is crazy. So they operating like they have been on forever so far. So, you know, ESPN gets the money because FM band, you know, that, that costs more money. And, and they said, you know, since it's mainly talk, why waste money? On the FM. And I, I can go with that. Because why, why waste money? There was n not really much that they had. That really. Warranted FM. Quality broadcast. The truth be told. Since it's mostly talk. The only difference is. <clears throat> it's a little harder to distinguish. Each person's voice. In FM everybody has a very unique voice. But in AM. It's different. <laughs> So that's a weird thing. And before I move on to the main topic, WBLS, which I thought was, it was the last black owned station, at least in New York. I think one of the few R&B stations, because most of them converge to pop. It's like we have um, communism going on. You know, we don't have any choices these days. So it was black. WBLS. Then I said, let me look it up. <clears throat> Apparently they sold it for, I think, a couple of years ago, or a year or so ago, for $115 million. But as far as I, I know, I think it's still WBLS R&B. Again, I haven't listened to that in a minute. <clears throat> but um, I think it's still r and I'm sure after a while that might uh, go too. Kiss. <clears throat> I don't know what the fuck is going on. I don't even feel sick. <clears throat> Must be dry. But 98.7 Kiss and WBLS. Stations that more or less built the hip hop situation. Gone. Crazy. I think they sold it for $115 million, Which I guess they figure what operating costs. Trying to keep advertisers, maintain advertisers. You might as well just get the money and go. <clears throat> but people who buy 
stuff like that. So that's the thing about black business. I think I made a video talking about this before because other people, they can afford to keep operating. Let's just say BLS is losing money. Rich people can afford to keep operating at a loss because they want to keep the asset. Well, a lot of black people, that's their main thing. It's like the owners of the Lakers. You know, that's their main thing. I'm sure they probably got other business ventures. But that's their bread and butter. So that's the thing that makes them the most money. Technically, they could sell it for the hell team was sold recently. I think it was for $4 billion. Forgot what that what the hell team it was, but <clears throat> it's the Lakers. So <laughs> at the very least, this is gonna be more than four billion, put it like that, if they decide to sell the Lakers. But of course, that's the type of shit you want to pass down to your family. You don't want to give that shit up. Because once you give the Lakers up, the Yankees, the Cowboys up, you already know what's gonna happen. <laughs> Price is going to be so sky high. Not only for those franchises, but for the next popular ones in those sports. Nobody's going to be able to get in. That's why I think the NFL started venture uh, capitalists allowing them to uh, get part ownership of teams because these prices are so damn high now. And some of these owners, they want some cash, so they sell part of the team. Anyway, let me get to the main point because that, all that was a side uh, note. Been watching uh, people like SETI. Of course, we know about the Tariq Nasheeds and uh, other black YouTubers, influencers. It's pretty more than obvious that these people are on the tape from the Republicans because we never see, they don't understand that some people listen to conservative radio. So we hear, we've been listening to it for years because like I just mentioned, radio was so horrible and music is so horrible. <clears throat> Started listening to uh, talk radio because I never even thought about listening to sports on a radio. I'm like, man, who the fuck want to listen to sports on a radio? But apparently that's been happening for decades and decades. So I'm late to the game. And even Michael K, I think he said he'd been doing the radio show, I think for 30 years or something like that. Could have been more. But I'm like, damn, I didn't know that. I always thought of him as the guy on the uh, on the Yankees. Not radio that long. Because, again, I never listened to sports radio, so I'm like, fuck it. But music got so bad, I said, fuck it. Talk radio is the only thing that's interesting. But anyway... You can tell that they're on the take from listening to them constantly talk about Democrats, uh, Democratic shills, uh, liberals, liberal ideology, uh, left wing nuts, uh, left wing conspirators, uh, you know, all that kind of talk that you hear to Sean Hannity. See, those people get paid a lot of money to spew the propaganda. Maybe these guys are shooting for that. Must I get edited from YouTube if I put this on YouTube? You know, everything I'm putting on is going on Rumble first. Some might be Rumble only. Uh, so all this talk is conservative radio talk. They're talking like they're rich and racist. And like I always say about Tariq Nasheed, when he's always talking about when people call up, What's your background? What's your nationality? I said, damn, if there had been white people and they said, what's your race? You would say, God damn, these people are extremists. And again, white people call up. He's so respectful to them, kissing their asses, and they're supposed to be so-called suspected white supremacists who uh, coincidentally are always promoting his products, even when he's not bringing it up. That's how you know the shit is fake to begin with. Why would a fucking white supremacist know his products and then promote his products. You can't be that stupid to fall for this shit. Then when an African uh, calls up. 
you're musty, dusty, crusty, and all this other shit. And if a white man was saying the same things about these people that Tariq Nasheed was saying, you say this is a filthy white supremacist. That's what a real white supremacist would say. They wouldn't call up their uh, buddy buddy joking around and all this bullshit with Tariq Nasheed. It's not how white supremacists roll. Bunch of bullshit. They're nothing but Republican shield. Paid, highly paid. Well, knowing black people, not highly paid, just paid. As you know, like I always say, it doesn't take much to uh, make black people sell out. <laughs> now, white people, they demand millions. God damn it. Again, Sean Hannity, last time I checked, my man makes $40 million a year. And you wonder why the man is always showing up to work. If you make $40 million a year doing radio propaganda, even if you didn't believe in none of the shit you were talking about, you would build a fucking apartment in the fucking building that you work in. I know I would. I practically live there. Be on call. I wouldn't give a fuck. $40 million a year. <laughs> That's why he could keep on speaking the, the bullshit with, with confidence. And then you got other Negroes who follow along with the same uh, shit. Oh, we got to stop voting for Democrats and all this type of shit. Liberals, Democrats, you know, the buzzwords. Buzzwords of hate, intolerance. <laughs> liberal. Oh, I don't like liberal ways. That means uh, you don't like freedom, right? Because that's what the core of liberal means. Basically, hey, having having freedoms, you know, doing more than what you need. Conservative is supposed to, you know, at the core of its name, not give out too much. And in the case of conservatives, not give out too much motherfucking money. Because they're not paying black people on a whole to go Republican. They're only paying these coon agents to go Republican. How do we know they're getting paid? Because they keep on every other fucking show is about Kamala Harris. Not that I give a fuck. You know how I feel. But every other show is about Kamala Harris. Why you shouldn't vote for her. Why she's not black. And all this and all that. Now you know. And I'm segueing into the main topic. Which smoothly gets into that. Now, you know what I've been saying about East Indians for the longest time. Now, I didn't say that they were on our side. Never said that. Just like Uncle Tom House Negroes are not on our side. But they are black. We've had this. That's why I wish Kamala Harris had been the complexion of her sister. Instead of being so light. Because now, because that gives a lot of people the excuse to think that she got light from her mother. when She got light from her father. That's what, that's why I wish she was darker. But it is what it is, because now we have this fucking debate on is she black or is she not black? She's just not black American. Just, you know, that's that's the bottom line. But she is black. But you got other people say she's not black at all. But I maintain that she's blacker on her Indian side and her Jamaican side. Now people are starting to put that together. But again, I would never call an East Indian not black. Why? Because ever since I was a fucking kid, I told you parts of these stories before. I would go into white hoods or areas where white people are at, and I see these East Indians. You know, my first mind, I'm like, damn, are these some type of African type people or something? What, what, what is this? Who are these people? But I would notice that they always acted funny. Again, I'll never forget we were staying at this motel or hotel. Saw the pool I, at the time again. I didn't know that East Indians own or could own anything. Uh, but you know, their swimming pool was out there, they were in the pool, white kids were in the pool. 
So I said, you know, me and my sister, let's go in the pool. She's like, all right. <laughs> so we get to the pool. You know, they start to look funny. You know that look. Then they start easing out of the pool. Next thing you know, we're in there by ourselves. I said, now, as a little kid, I'm like, I was thinking about playing with them. You know, that's what you do as a little kid. You, you're like, oh, man, I see some other kids I want to play. So then, I, you know, I said to myself, man, this sounds like some funny shit going on. I don't quite know what the funny shit is, because I'm like, if, if it is about us being black, I'm like, damn, these East Indians, they're like five times darker than us. So that's the thing that kept going in my mind about when people say the white man discriminates against us because of our the color of our skin. Then I always thought about if it's the color of our skin, how come the African, how come the East Indian, how come they're not suffering the same discrimination? The Caribbean, the Caribbean that says that they're Caribbean. How come they're not suffering what we're suffering? Even where I'm at now, these motherfuckers act funny. I told you about different apartments I've been in apartment complexes they were there they see me coming in you could see the look on their face of despair like oh man <laughs> the other place I was at it was the Avalon this guy moved the Indian guy moved the fuck out real quick this place Indian came Older guy with his two sons looked like he had the apartment for his two sons so they can go to school or something or a job or something. But they had that look when they saw me. Every Indian that's come in here has moved the fuck out. I'm sure it's not because they just see me. It's because they see other people. It's like, they I don't even think they lasted a year. And I told you one time I was walking out of my place just to get to the garage. And then they come out with a, a trash bag, taking the trash out. Sees me, walks right back to his place. I hear him lock the door. I'm like, man, what the fuck what kind of paranoia do these jungle bunnies have? I mean, you, you gotta be fucking stupid to think that you're gonna get attacked. <laughs> or, or whatever the fucking paranoia is. It's fucking crazy. So, I'm like, man, these people are crazy. Any, bottom line is, I don't even think they last the year. They're out of here. Somebody else is already in the apartment. Explain to me how it is that people can get attacked, colonized by the white man, <laughs> shipped all over the world by the white man. Now, you know who's been talking about that shit. Or that, that I'm still segueing into the main topic. But yet, you hate other people that the white man is designate, designated for hate for the sole purpose of trying to kiss the white man's ass to get ahead. So far, it has worked. I will say that. Because <laughs> the white man's left them alone. Maybe the white man's finally realizing his true origins. And you can find that on the Black Everything website. Also known as RealHistoryWW.com. That website needs to uh, explore that shit a little more. So, in case people don't know, that means they, they, they say that the white man is the albino of the Dravidian. He's, he's sure treating the East Indians like uh, that might be the case. Like, okay, well, we share uh, languages and culture. And though European languages always tell people, where the Indo come from in, in European languages. It's common sense that, you know, sometimes a white man, he can't cover up every lie. So shit is right in front of your face. You don't think about it because somebody's telling you something else. It's like if you see a naked woman right in front of you, you can have a pimp or somebody telling you that's not, she's not naked, she's wearing a dress. 
or that's a painting and you might be dumb enough to believe it. <laughs> that's what they do. So they tell you there's a group called Indo-European Languages. And you remember the little debate I had about that, people playing stupid. Uh, <laughs> and again, I put more shit on Rumble, but they just take too fucking long. But they call it Indo-European Languages. It's right in front of your face. Anybody... With half a brain would ask, well, why would it be Indo-European languages? Because India ain't near Europe. Just like the, the term Caucasian. We've been, and now if, in case you're wondering, I, I, under different pseudonyms on YouTube for years, have been highlighting, whenever I talked about Caucasian and race on YouTube, I always put what the word is right in front of your face. It's not Caucasian. That's what we've been taught to say. Caucasian. It's Cauc Asian. Now, some of you might say that sounds like some nation of Islam bullshit. But in this case, that's not that isn't the case. Because we always say white men, white people come from the Caucasus Mountains, right? That's in Asia. That's not in Europe. Even though now they're starting to switch over the caucuses and trying to slickly slickly uh call that Europe now. Some some parts of the caucuses. If you look, that's why it's always good to look at old encyclopedias, not just the Britannica that some people use to try to prove their Uncle Tom points out of France. So you can compare and contrast the lies that they tell over the generations because they're ordered to Tell lies and put them in the uh, in the books. You will see that the Caucasus were never called Europe, and they were never called Asia either. Even a few years ago, I'm talking a few years. I'm talking about five years ago, because sometimes I something will come up in my head, and I say, you know what? Let me find out for certain if the Caucasus are in Asia. Because they never said that it was Asia. And they damn sure never said it was Europe. Now parts of it. They're trying to say is Europe. I'm like man come on. But you'll see the Caucasus. The, the, the Turks. Or Turkic tribes. Basically took over that whole region. And they're still there now. And they speak Turkic languages. Those Turkic peoples are peoples you got to research heavily. It's convoluted. But again, that's the key to a lot of shit. That's why Russia must stay intact. That's why the Europeans, they don't like Russia because it's an empire. They grab all the land that they can get. But they need Russia to stay alive because Russia took over the old Mongol and Turkic empires. So they keep them at bay. So that's why you need Russia. So. Cork Asian. Says what it is. An Asian. From the Caucasus region. And they labeled that. That's why they call. That's why they say Caucasian. When you deal with white supremacists. They say, well, Caucasian Asian doesn't mean white. Well, why would you go along with that white supremacist? If it doesn't mean white, then you should go along with whoever falls under the umbrella of Caucasian as one of your brothers. But they don't. And East Indians are not classified as Caucasians. East Indians were, in the United States, they were arguing to be classified as Caucasian because, you know, other groups like the small hats and everybody else, what they like to do is they like to use the white man and his lies against them. Oh, you say Caucasian means this, then God damn it. I'm going to battle to be Caucasian because they know they'll be, they should be left alone, at least legally speaking, 
from uh, tyranny and oppression. So that's why they do that kind of thing. <clears throat> so you want to see a black Indian and he's still not as black as they get. Look up that Coke, old Coke commercial. I like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. <clears throat> Look at that black ass East Indian on there. He's not as black as they come, but he's still black as a mother. <laughs> God damn it, the only difference is the hair. I mean, god damn. And that's because East India is a mix. That's why they come in a variety of colors. Then you got other people talking about when it comes to Kamala Harris's color, they say, well, she's mixed. But yet, if she had been with someone to deem an African, then you would say become in all colors. Well, I'm not defending Harris. She shouldn't be president because she's a fucking foreigner. But, you know, and that's why she doesn't use her last name, Imhoff. Because then they can't try to sell her as black with the last name Imhoff. And, of course, that doesn't fit well trying to sell her to white people either. But Harris sounds more black, so... <clears throat> Let's have her be Harris. I don't even think I ever heard her anybody interview her and ask her why do you, you don't use your husband's last name. But I'm sure whatever the case is, she'll make up some bullshit. Because even independent Hillary Clinton hyphenated her name. But still use her uh, husband's name. But of course, when she was so-called running for president, the last name Clinton benefited her. See, Imhoff can't benefit Kamala Harris. I don't know why they're trying to sell her as black and pushing things that the way that they're pushing it. Because just from my own surveys and hearing chit chat among uh, rich white people, <laughs> they're like, I ain't voting for Kamala Harris. You know, because they don't like. It's not even about party. Is you know they is probably from some other shit that they don't really want to say in front of me. Even though a few were kind of bold, talking about how come they keep trying to sell us black and all that kind of shit. But they're not voting for her. Any polls are all fake. And made up. See, when you go to college, you will understand some things. Because I even worked at a polling uh, spot on campus. Professional polling spot. That you will. One of the famous ones that you heard of. And it was interesting to see it in person. Once again, on a, any particular topic... They will call usually a thousand people. See, the thing about polls, when you do it like that, if you call in certain areas, you're going to get mostly white people. So you're not going to get a true, you're not going to get a true uh, read on how people really feel. You're only going to get a read on how those people felt. And then they just attribute it to everybody. It's just like when you hear Negroes talk about, well, black people voted for Obama 91%, 97%. I've been arguing with people for years. And when I ask the question, you know how I do, I ask simple questions that have hard answers. And they call it trolling because they know they can't answer the question. But it, it, even if they knew the answer and they try to answer truthfully, they know what the answer has to be. So I asked, well, how do they know how many blacks or who blacks voted for during the elections? 
And they say, well, they looked at them coming in. You think that they're writing that shit down? Well, their names. They can't keep that information. And they don't know who you voted for to begin with. Unless it's rigged. <laughs> so how do you know that 97% of black people voted for Obama? You just assume that. Or a polling agency told you that. But how do they know that? Even if they have a list of saying, uh, let's say, black people. You don't know what kind of black people those are. Or let's say they call people in certain zip codes. And they presumed that the people were what they were or what they're looking for. You never know because black people can sound white. Black people can sound uh, uh, black. White people can sound white too. Uh, sound black. And I tell you, I lived in a uh, uh, fancy zip code. And I told you this before. <laughs> when you live in a fancy zip code, I used to get these. I don't. It's funny. I don't get them now. I don't know. Maybe it's because the internet is what it is. But I used to get these catalogs for like Tiffany's and some other shit. You know, some fancy ass clothing, rich people shit. That's when I first learned that people like Bill Gates to go around wearing what you think are lame, cheap clothes. I got a catalog one time with those type of Bill Gates type of clothes. And I'm like, man, this ain't my style. I said, let me look through this shit. I was like shocked and amazed at the prices. Fucking sweater. $2,000. <laughs> A pair of corduroy slacks. $1,500. A fucking belt. $500. A button-down shirt. $500. You want it embroidered? $700. I'm like, God damn. I mean, these are the kind of clothes that didn't really have a logo on them. Like, you know, most people recognize a polo and say, oh, yeah, that's an expensive shirt. But these clothes didn't have a motherfucking logo on them. See, black people would never buy shit like that because they're like, man, I ain't buying nothing that's overly expensive unless... Somebody just pulled up. Unless I can uh, show them the logo to show them how much I paid for this motherfucker. That's a black person last time. That was a white person. <laughs> the motherfucker's changing uh, races or something. Borrowing the car. Roommates. What? Anyway. <clears throat> so... You know, people and black people in particular, they're not going to spend that kind of money. Number one, those are millionaire and billionaires clothes when when shit costs that kind of money. Because to the average person, even a person making 100000 a year, you can't build, you, you're not going to build up a fucking wardrobe paying $2,000 for a pair of pants, especially some lame looking pants. You're not going to do that. So that's why they have certain shit for certain people and the Tiffany some of that shit was affordable uh, other jewelry uh, and some shit that I used to get out of some of those catalogs that I, I like because you couldn't just see those shits in the store so there were definitely uh, 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 something that I like getting but the main point is that I noticed that when you're in a different zip code you get different things. When you're in another zip code, you're not getting catalogs like that. You know, you, you, you get... Well, magazines seem to be going away these days, but... <laughs> I was getting shit like that. Magazine offers. I used to love my video game magazines, but... Not anymore. But anyway. 
Oh, that went under. But anyway, what we have now, we have the East Indian. This person don't look familiar. Man. I don't remember seeing this person. Oh, it's two of them. With the, the other one just pulled the fuck up. Same car. Same color. Ain't that some shit? There's actually three cars. Right beside me, the same model. Two of them in the same color, the other one in a different color. That shit confused the fuck out of me. So this other lady must be new. So anyway, <laughs> it's getting hot in this motherfucker too, by the way. So anyway, <clears throat> you know, that's how it works. And when it comes to the East Indians and these, these other zip codes and stuff, I'm the one pointing out what they were making. Because I'm the one who likes investigating this shit. Afrocentrists and Pan-Africans, they don't look into other people. The only thing they're programmed to know is white supremacy, what white people did to black people, and what Africans or black people or whatever they want to call them used to be thousands of years ago. That's all they know. I had to force them to talk about North Africa and the fact that there are black people still in North Africa today. I just watched the video the other day about some Libyan uh, leaders, that's right, plural, Libyan leaders summit because despite the president of Libya that the uh, media shows you, that guy is not even the goddamn leader. That white type of guy. They got different factions going on, like Somalia. And one of them, out of all the ones that I saw, one of them was black. And he had a uh, African style, you know, like kind of like what Gaddafi used to wear, that Kufi type thing with the uh, dot on it, the ball on the top. Looking like he's out of Nigeria. But he's out of Libya. Pan-Africans, what they need to do is support people like that. But that's not Pan-Africans. That's not what their goal is. That's not, they're not real with this shit. They're all full of shit. See, I talk about, I look into other shit. I don't just look into ancient Egypt, uh, uh, Nubia. In fact, I even had the force them to talk about Nubia because they don't like talking about that and then I like to relate it to the modern day Sudanese and South Sudanese in particular and really doesn't matter you got South Sudanese types in regular Sudan too and in Egypt but they hate those kind of Africans because they're black you never hear them trying to emulate them they only talk about that shit in history and they only emulate the white man because the white man tells you when it comes to Egypt the people aren't black unless their skin is jet black. If their skin is any shade of brown <laughs> that's not black. But then you look at yourself and you say god damn why do I have to be black then? That's, what, that's how I was feeling with these East Indians. But of course the bigger scheme is divide and conquer. That's why the white man separates different types of black peoples. Because he doesn't want you to get together just like his Germanic confederation. The way they get together. The Germanic tribes, also known as the Allies. And expanded for NATO. They don't like others getting together especially the people that they conquered but they have to stay together because they know that's the only way that they can survive so these afrocentrists they don't work they don't look at anything else that's why they're ignorant when people like me were constantly saying that east indians are black they don't like hearing that but yet these are the same people that said people are melanated people 
These, these are their words. That's why I challenge these words. I don't challenge it to troll, but people have to call it trolling because they don't have an explanation for the hypocrisy. That's why. That's why I always despise people saying this person is a melanated person or this person is highly melanated. Okay, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? Then when I show you another highly melanated person, oh, they don't count. <laughs> I mean, so what the fuck are you calling somebody highly melanated to begin with? Now you got some highly melanated people uh, don't count and others do. And then you got some low melanated people who count with the highly melanated people. But the other ones that's very highly melanated don't count with the highly melanated people. When you hear conflicting answers like that, that's when you're being had. So, this is where I come in. I just challenge. When I hear bullshit, that's when I challenge it. I don't challenge it to challenge it. And the BS artists, they know that they're bullshitting. And they realize, that, okay, somebody caught me. So, let me switch it up. And then when they, my point is, as I continue to segue into the main point of people stealing my talking points, because I noticed that SETI had been swiping or borrowing. It's all right to borrow knowledge, but at least just say, listen, I got this from brother such and such. And I've always told you, if they got the knowledge from somebody with a big name, they're going to make sure that they say I got it from such and such so they can sound more intelligent. But when they get it from somebody like me, they say I never heard of the nigga. Who the fuck is that? This is a clout chaser. You know, all that kind of shit. Well, you're clout chasing my information. See, you could tell when people steal when you come up from uh, my original ideas or my unique ideas. Who has been talking about the British trying to recolonize the United States? Who's been talking about that? Who's been uh, giving evidence? Matter of fact, now that I'm on Mumble, I'm going to give some real evidence. Because you remember, I have videos on that on YouTube and they took those shits down quickly. If I wasn't on to something, why would they take this shit down? Because nobody was offended in the video. I've been pointing out this shit all over the internet and YouTube. Like when they have British actors. What do you need British actors for, white or black? There's like 330 million people in this country. The fuck you need them for? You didn't need them be uh, before? I was just watching that Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. Coincidentally, my uh, internet slowed to a crawl last night. I think they... Uh, may have uh, scanned it <laughs> but I use emule instead of the other uh, the torrents to get it so whatever the case was I changed the name of the file altered it in a smooth way so that no nobody would be able to search for it but that I would still know what the fuck it is excuse me then I noticed after a while my internet went back up to high speeds so I watched that shit. I actually like the Planet of the Apes. I guess this is the... I still didn't see the Mark Wahlberg version. One of these days I'll try to watch that shit, but... It, it looked rough, you know what I mean? <laughs> but the white girl... I noticed that... I said I can see she's British. Because of her wide eyes and that nose, that black style nose. I'm sure you've all noticed that a lot of British people look like they're mixed with black because that's what the fuck they are. You take over a black land, you know, you're going to mix with them or, or, or try to kill them. And her British accent slipped through a few times too. But see, I kept saying to myself, damn, man, why do they got to have British people? I mean, goddamn. Every time you turn around, British in the movies, British, they played all most of the goddamn Marvel comic heroes. <clears throat> <clears throat> then you got British and you know you know about the Africans and Caribbeans trying to play us and shit which is a motherfucking insult and then it's not just black 
you got British, Asians, uh, British, and they've been throughout our TV shows for a while. Because even on uh, Star Trek uh, Deep Space Nine, you had that female, I think she could have been Indian or something like that. The one with the titties that looked good, though. And then there was another Star Trek after that. You had the guy that, that Arabic guy in the uh, turquoise uh, uniform. I don't know about you. I can't watch too much Star Trek, though. <laughs> I get tired of that shit after a while. Even though I did, I'm going to start watching those Star Trek Generation movies. Since I finally got through watching those uh, Star Trek original cast movies. A few of those were kind of rough, but the last one was all right. But they still seem like big budget TV shows, except for the first, except for the first one. That one seemed like an actual motion picture. But when it comes to East Indians, I don't know how many lives you remember. I'm going to seek through the search through the lives and put up uh, prime cuts. I went down the list of the CEOs and how many Indians are running these corporations. And it sounds like somebody like SETI, he'll say he searched them himself, but I don't, he didn't show the list, but it's funny how I went through it. Now, all of a sudden he's acting like he, he he's checking it out. This is how they do when they want the money. Name recognition and keep the influence going. They say that they did what somebody else did. Like she for you. She talks about how people steal her shit, which I believe. Other people talk about how people steal their shit, which I believe. Because they figure we're insignificant. So I could take this shit. I'm significant. It's about money. It's about influence. That is brainwashing. I talked about how East Indians run the tech biz and how they fucking keep people out once they take over the, the, the segment. People like me, I can't even get back into the shit because these motherfuckers run the shit. It's fucked up. Real fucked up. And I told people the people who run the tech uh, uh, business are the East Indians and the Mongol Asians. Mongol Asians, they're in a better position because they actually manufacture the shit. But of course, if you manufacture the shit, that means you know how to design the shit. Eat the Indians, they mainly design the shit. They don't really manufacture that much. And in the tech world, it's an ongoing battle between Indians and Mongol Asians. Even when you see the spelling bee, Mongol Asians, East Indians. Now, on a whole, it's good that some type of black person are doing big things. Because like I always say, us with the weed, the guns, <laughs> the drugs, petty crime, you know, I, that shit is not doing anything for you. If you don't want to fucking change, at least put your kids in and get them educated. And part of that is going to be really keeping them, keeping them away from your culture. The degenerate part. Because even with those Caribbeans, even though a lot of them partake in degenerate urban culture, they still educate the majority of their people. Because they're not us. They got a different culture, different way of speaking come from the British world, mainly. So, not only that, but you know what I've been saying about the British replacement of us. And, and, and by the fact that the connections all fall back to the British. And the British are trying to usurp the country and bring us back into the British fold. But of course, the small hats run both countries, the UK and the US. And they ran the UK before there was a US. And it could be proven that they even made sure that there was a such thing as the US so that they could use the US to do what they could not do in the United Kingdom 
at that point in time. Like I said, look up the founder of uh, Cleveland. A lot of people I'm telling you there are a lot of small hats that got history in this country. And they didn't just come from Poland or Germany on Ellis Island. <laughs> I find a lot of this shit out by mistake because I'm not actually looking for shit. And then I come across shit by accident. Like with Cleveland, I was just like, you know, wonder how they got their name. Just like Houston, Dallas, and, you know, other cities that sound like somebody's name. And you look them up, you see the picture. He's like, God damn. Then you think about Abraham Lincoln. I mean, shit is like right in front of your faces. So, I made the connection with the British because, you know, every time there's two, like, when it comes to us, hold on, let me get this goddamn water. <clears throat> when it comes to us, there's a few points of evidence that you can look at. Caribbeans, usually in the British spear. Hardly anywhere else. You got black exploitation movies. A lot of those actors were Caribbean. Calvin Lockhart. Uh, Godfrey Cambridge. You should have known with that goddamn name. <laughs> and his look. Because that, that's, that's the thing when I always saw Godfrey Cambridge. I always said, damn, that guy got a look. I just never saw it before. <laughs> now, I've seen some dark-skinned people with some white facial features before, but even had a classmate in school one time, but I knew he wasn't a uh, black American because uh, of his name. So, Godfrey Cambridge, I said, you know that guy's different, Sidney Portier. And I kept saying to myself, you know what? They elevate these guys to high levels. Give him respect. Because you think about Sidney Poitier. His name and his movies. He always played the great black man. The equalizer. The hero. The man that made white people tolerant of black people. Because he's well spoken. We can't speak like that because we don't have his accent and background. <laughs> Guess who's coming to dinner? He always had to be uh, highly educated. I find, uh, I was looking something up on that too. They said something. I forgot who the person was, but they said that shit was based on or influenced by a real story. <laughs> I forgot who the person was. I'm sure some of you might know who that is. Um, <clears throat> guess who's coming to dinner? It's to Sir With Love. Practically every movie he was in, he was great. Respectable. Calvin Lockhart, same thing. Even if he was playing a criminal because of his voice. You know, we don't have voices like that. So when you hear those voices, you're like, oh, this man, you know, my man got that uh, Hollywood theatrical voice. My man who played Blackie Love, the same thing. You know, you get a, you get a lot of that. They get. And they're also taking jobs, too, by the way. I know a lot of you don't like to hear that, but God damn it, they're taking our jobs. Uh, so they get the roles in the movies. They're seen as respected. Then when we get roles in movies, our females got a strip. They're playing whores. We're playing drug dealers and shit. Pimps. Or victims of white supremacy. Slaves and shit like that. I don't know if you noticed that shit, but that's some shit I noticed. I said, see, that's the Caribbean. So that's why that black European shit, you can't uh, dismiss that and ignore that shit. Because it's almost as if they're the, the white man is like, okay, we brought these Caribbeans here. And they were Europeans. But we still got to at least let them get put in charge of these other blacks. 
It's kind of the way, um, you know, when they, the U.S. might overthrow a monarchy or a monarchy or a government got overthrown in Europe or the U.S., they might have them stay in one of their countries and they'll still have them living like royalty and they'll still address them with the, uh, you know, as king or princess or whatever. It's like they still got to show them respect, even though even if they conquered their country, it's like, you know, we we respect you, but we we wanted your shit, shit like that. So that's why they kind of put them. If you notice, they kind of let them have free reign. They try to attribute hip hop to them. They can't really come up with nothing else because they know they didn't do the shit, <clears throat> weren't even involved in none of the other shit. Then when it comes to politics, the Colin Powells, the, uh, uh, what's the other Rice, the other Susan Rice, a few of these other Negroes that you see, Condoleezza Rice might be Caribbean for all I know too. With a name like Condoleezza, and from what I've been investigating, it looked like she's, uh, you know, might be dipping and dabbing into some uh, some weirdo stuff. A lot of geeks are kind of like that. That's why I tell people most serial killers are homosexuals. Matter of fact, I made a video on that shit too. That shit got uh, fucking uh, taken off of YouTube. <laughs> but what everything I was saying was fact. <laughs> it was fact, man. But they, they don't like the truth, man. But uh, it is what it is. So that's what I'm saying. You look at the black image in the U.S., see who they have playing us. Then you got the football thing with the Colin Kaepernick. He wasn't us, but they try to give him a, a pseudo black background. He wasn't raised by black people. But yet he's a, a, a supposed champion of black justice fucking name a german germanic name like kaepernick i mean come on it's some crazy shit but people fall for it because it's the pan-african shit softened your mind up and warmed you up for this shit see people like me when everybody else goes left i go right they say this is an african person this person has african features then i go pointing out some other person with some African features, and I and then I say, so what's up with that? Then they hate, get mad. Then I point out a person that's supposed to be a so-called African, and then they don't have the features that you claim that they should have. Then I ask you, what's up with that? Some of them get so bold, they just say, oh, okay, they're not black then. But yet they're very highly melanated. <laughs> the lies that come out of their mouths is crazy. But, you know, I didn't want to break SETI down too much. Everybody knows I've been talking about the British trying to subvert the U.S. with the help of families like the Bush family. And again, I, that's why I say uh, Kennedy being knocked off. can't discount the British because they did say that an English rifle was found that's some that some of that news that gets out that's quickly suppressed but it's there on the record and I forgot the name of the English rifle but if you put in English rifle JFK assassination I'm sure that should have come up uh, I think it's supposed to be like in the Mauser uh, family but um Again, the British have been trying to get back with the U.S. Or say, or shall I say, get with the U.S. For the longest time. Out of all countries. And you can't count Iraq twice. That was one continuous shit. But the U.S. went to war with the United Kingdom the most. People never think about that shit. Because <laughs> the British... Made the attempt again in 1812 because, you know, they 
did what Hitler didn't do. They said, okay, we took this L. Let's fall back, regroup, recoup, and try it again, which they tried. Keep in mind the UK, you might talk about that Pearl Harbor, and you know, you got a lot of things that say that the US let that shit happen. But the UK is still the only country that has ever attacked and bombed the U.S. Capitol. <laughs> and I know some of you might say, what about 9-11? Who the fuck were they? Were they named? Now, what if there were another country like uh, Israel or the U.K. and Israel? Could they suppress that? Because you see who benefited from that shit. But right now, the UK is on, the only one that ever attacked the United States Capitol and bombed that shit. And Hitler bombed London. He was the only one to do that shit. When London, you could say, was at their peak in power. Same, he did the same thing with Paris. So that's why when you question events, don't go for the narration and what people told you. Let me just get a little air in here. It's a lot colder outside than it was in this car. Yeah, so don't just go by what people told you. When you investigate shit on your own and think about the why did this happen or why do they say that this happened and then you investigate shit on your own, you find out, hey man, that doesn't make any sense. Why doesn't it make sense? It doesn't make sense because they're lying. Just like Hitler, I always tell people. <laughs> they act like you can't. The small hats want you to talk about Hitler and Nazis only as they prefer. They don't want you to see, see it any other way. Hitler is like Castro. And Joseph Stalin, for that matter. And what I mean is this. When Hitler took power, he was celebrated by the West. I think he was Time Magazine's man of the year. Even after he invaded Poland. Fine. You can have it. Took a few other things. Oh, okay, well, you, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> you you got to watch your ass, but all right, take it. You know why they said that shit? Number one, because they're all Germanic people. So that's number one. Two, even then, uh, Portugal, I mean, Portugal still has a few possessions now. Spain still had a little something, but not, not much. Uh, of course, France and the UK, Netherlands, they had their colonies. So they would look pretty hypocritical to say, hey, you can't take nothing, even though Hitler invaded Europe. <laughs> so that's the difference. But see, if you look back at other colonies in Europe or colonial powers in Europe, this is another thing the white man likes suppressing. They actually took, they, they colonized Europe first or, tr or try to colonize parts of Europe like Spain with the Netherlands and Italy. They tried, they took these places. Hell, right now, you got the UK that still has Gibraltar that's colonized in Europe. Cyprus colonized and then they talk about Russia and their land grabs the only reason why they worried about Russia is they worried about Russia infringing on their territories so Europe got colonized by Europe too 
They don't like letting you know that part because that kind of messes up their whole narrative. So that's the reason why they said, okay, Hitler, you could take Poland, take, take, take this little shit. But then once they realized that the man had eyes on all of Europe and these people's empires, then that's when they said, oh man, fuck this. Fuck that. We can't let you take this shit now. Now you're getting the fuck out of here now. Now he could have done that shit if uh, he would have learned to relax, but I guess he got greedy and wanted to take it all. Too soon. And people forget. Spain, Italy, they were on Hitler's side, but now, you know, Italy's in the G7. Uh, Spain is uh, at least respected to a degree, even though they're not that rich, but, you know, it is, and they lost, basically lost their entire empire, part of it, or much of it from uh, U.S. Uh, shenanigans. <laughs> Which goes to show that Spain is not a part of the brotherhood. For those who keep thinking that because Spain is in Europe, that means white. That's brainwashing bullshit that people pull off. <clears throat> so, you know, they kind of let him run free. Same thing with Stalin. He was cool. He was an ally. Then when he started taking too much, then all of a sudden... He was a bad guy. You notice how they, back in World War II, they let the Soviet Union pull up and take part of uh, Germany. You just look at the borders in Europe of the former Soviet Union. That's why they were concerned with that shit. So, this is what they do. They let them go. And then when they go too far, now they're bad. So the British, they're supposed to be the allies, the, the main ally, even though that's the main one that we went to war with. I remember when Clinton was in office, the former British Prime Minister John Major kept saying that I hope that Bill Clinton understands the special relationship between the US and the UK and adheres to that to, to that relationship. <clears throat> I kept saying to myself, what the fuck does this guy mean by that? And I kept asking how could the relationship between the US and the UK be tighter than the relationship between the UK and Canada? When Canada is still under the command of the United Kingdom. Even Canadians act like they play dumb about this shit. That's why in Canada, you got the Royal Canadian Police, the Royal this, the Royal that. You got the, the UK monarchy on the money because they're under the UK. And it was I also who said, because this is my original shit, that uh, the Commonwealth in the UK is nothing but a British Empire rebrand. Because if you notice, they don't call it an empire. They don't like that word anymore. Because empire means you got people under subjectivity by force. So they call it a Commonwealth now. Some countries got their independence, but it's still an empire. If they recognize the UK monarchy as head of state, that's not a commonwealth if they're not really sharing the wealth. But it seems like India is doing okay. <clears throat> well, that is when they go to white nations. So, when I write something on YouTube, a lot of the shit gets deleted because of the censorship. But that's why I always call them the UK Empire. 
Because that's I know that's some shit that they want people to forget about. So that's why I make sure I call it the Empire. They want people to think that the shit ain't no empire. It's, it's, it's still a fucking empire. It's just that they got slick, like Australia, New Zealand, Canada. They try to make it look like they got their independence. But they're still under the empire. It's just like an in, independently controlled. It's like if. Uh, Microsoft. They got the Xbox division. Microsoft would be the UK. Xbox would be Australia. New Zealand, Canada. They want you to think that these places operate on their own. And then each company, each uh, segment might have a chairman or a CEO or something like that. But who do they still answer to? So I'm about to let this go in a minute, but again, US TV shows, radio stations, politics, you keep hearing British voices all the fucking time. How many British TV shows and news shows out there have Americans in them when the shit was not imported from the United States? probably can't name much and if you can I like to know about it so SETI I'm not mad at you but to the rest of you Negroes I just wish that you would just say alright I took the shit you notice he wasn't totally committed to it because he knew he didn't come up with the idea I'm committed to it because that's where it all leads I don't see anything else. I see British, 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 every goddamn where. London NFL games. Uh, So much shit that is interacting with the UK. But I don't see too much shit interacting from the UK interacting with us in their area. And I always tell people those NFL, the NBA uniforms... With the cut, with the advertising on them, that's more European like. WNBA uniforms, more European like. Even some NFL uniforms got redesigned to be more European like. Namely, those Tennessee Titans and now those Houston Texans. Now, I know some of them say that's a Houston thing, but goddamn it, it still looks European. Hell, you can even say the L.A. Rams uniforms are more European-like. And of course, call it what you want to call it, but the success plus the spreading of that team called the New England Patriots for 20 years. Come on. And they did play in London a few times too. And you know those people had to have been saying, damn. New York, New York versus New England. Which one do I root for? <laughs> See, this shouldn't even be a place in the U- U.S. called New England because this, this supposed to have been defeated. And for people who don't know, you got a place in Australia called New England, too. But these are things I'm talking about as British related British takeover. See, that's why they're going for the guns. Not only because they want to change the country, they want to try to get rid of the Constitution, which is destroying the country. They don't allow guns in the UK. Because they don't have even though a lot of our laws are based on their laws, but they don't have freedom in the UK like you think they do. They got 
mostly free speech, but it's not really protected by law. You can't own guns or arms in the U.S. You're supposed to be able to own arms. Arms are not limited to guns, by the way. But a lot of people keep thinking that because that's what they tell you. That's why the shit says you have the right to bear arms, not the right to bear guns, not the right to bear firearms or small arms. You have the right to bear arms. That And, and I write this shit on YouTube. I don't know how much it stays on there, but arms includes nuclear weapons, aircraft carriers, uh, fighter jets, bombs, everything. That's, that's, that's arms. Now, some people might say, well, that's absurd to talk about that type of shit. No, it's only because those type of weapons or arms, you have to be rich to have them. Your average, even billionaire can't get an aircraft carrier. <laughs> and if he did, what would he need it for? You know, that includes warships, all, all types of shit like that. But most people can't afford to have those things. That's why those weapons cost so goddamn much. But when it comes to small arms like guns and shit, they can't really, on the books, they can't restrict you legally from what you can have and what you can't have. And what Now, the only thing they, they could restrict on the books is the ammo and the ammo type. Cause you got the right to bear arms, you ain't got the right to have the ammo. Now, see, that's how they can get slick and, and do it like that. But instead, they they want to go for the guns because they don't want you fighting back when they really uh, do what they do. That's why they got all these foreign cops and all these foreigners in here. Because once these foreigners get activated, they don't have any skin in the game. They're just going for what, their own shit. Speaking of foreigners, that's another topic I've been talking about for. Years and years and years, the illegals and all that kind of shit. Shit's just been switched over to migrants now. Now people talking about the shit I've been talking about for years because I'm trying to see ahead of the game where shit is going. Why are they doing this and why are they doing that? Never ever think that the people running the show in this country don't know what the fuck they're doing. No matter how much they try to act like they, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. Don't ever think that they don't know what they're doing. They just want you to have the impression that the shit is going to hell. Uh, and they can't control shit. From the fake uh, Capitol building uh, takeover to fake mass shootings to these uh, politicians who laugh endlessly and trip over themselves and shit like that. It's all designed to make even the so-called royal family getting cancer. It's all designed to make people seem incompetent. You get all these foreigners here. What might you, some people might start begging for. Let's bring this country back to the essence. Let's bring it back to the British. You might start asking for that. I mean, like, again, I was looking at that Planet of the Apes. The British girl plays the hero uh, of in the U.S., and then you see Asian British, Black British. You see all that shit in movies. Fast and the Furious got the Black British girl. Even shit that's like Mission Impossible. That's supposed to be U.S. shit. Yeah, British people. And you, some of you might say, you know what? Maybe they just want to appeal to the British world by having them in the movie. So it'll make more money. Then I will say to you, <clears throat> when uh, did they bother doing that shit in the past? But you know who I just learned was British, so I didn't know about? British and Jamaican, that young MC rapper. Because I was on that Kenny Parker show. They were talking about that shit. I said, let me look up this young MC. I said, God damn, I never knew this motherfucker was British and Jamaican. I said, no wonder why he was whacked. <laughs> the young MC move it boy <laughs> that whack ass song then they, somebody in the chat they said uh, 
Flea from uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers did the bass line on that. I said, ah, now I see why that was such a big hit. There's always a reason. When you when you hear a song that's getting big and you're like, man, I don't see it. I don't know why. There's always an underlying reason. Matter of fact, I might do a show about something similar to that. And you, your minds might be blown. But anyway, before I go, let me just say this. I was watching these movies. I put some of the shit on my Facebook. These movies by uh, Dean Martin. Some guy called Matt Helm. I just look like some cheap uh, knockoff James Bond. But apparently these books came from the 60s. I thought it was movies only. But apparently it was a series of books. Matt Helm. I was like, Matt Helm? What kind of name is that? Now, I was thinking about, I don't know if he was the CIA director in 1964, but I think later on, Richard Helms <laughs> became the uh, uh, director. I, I was wondering if that guy may have named this character after Richard Helms. Because uh, this, this, unlike James Bond, this guy's job is to assassinate other agents. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out, yeah, I guess he did it in the movies, but I guess it was mainly agents that was trying to do their own thing, take over the world, bad guy, you know, typical Bond type bad guys. More of a comedy show. They said the books were kind of uh, serious, but I guess because of Dean Martin, they made it comedic. But anyway, I, I got a hold of those movies because I think a couple of years ago, I was into my late 1960s movies kick. So I was trying to see how movies from the 60s just smoothly transition over into movies that you see in the 70s where you see tons of nudity, cursing, drug use, killing, <laughs> and all that kind of shit going on. Because I'm like, damn, movies were under control in the 60s for the most part. Then in the 70s, goddamn, people, all total nudity, all types of shit. People sniffing cocaine, all types of shit going on. Calling black people niggas and coons in the movies and shit. I'm like, what the fuck happened? So, as I watch some of these movies, I see, or well, the British movies, so they had their own movies, and that's the way things should be kept separately. Because they got their style, we got ours, and there, they had nudity early on. They don't give a damn about no nudity and drug use and shit like that. And sex. Even homosex, les I seen some lesbian shit in a movie. I forgot the name of that movie. I think I talked about it before. 1969 about some girl that they brought over because the father, the girl's mother committed suicide and the uh, father felt guilty, brought the kid to live with them. But I don't think that that was his kid. But she turned out to be, she was a teenage girl, turned out to be some sexual freak. Some wild shit, man. 1969. I forgot the name of that shit. Uh, the daughter, stepdaughter, or some shit like that. The girl was looking sexy too, though. But you look at how they age now. Oh my like, god, damn. So anyway, this uh, Dean Martin, not the guy who changed his name, Italian guy. And when I was watching the last movie last night, I was just thinking about. Cause he had a line in the movie that said, oh, you like Perry Cuomo instead of me, huh? Then it hit me. I said, damn, Perry Cuomo, Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra, and that other dude, I forgot the other guy who recently died. Um, uh, I got his name, his face in my head, but not his name. But he did a song with Lady Gaga. You know, it's another guy who kind of changed his name so it won't sound Italian. I said, damn, you got all these Italian guys singing the same type of what I call Frank Sinatra type music. That must have been their thing. But see, these movies took place from 64 to 68. And I know people were still listening to that Frank Sinatra type shit. 
But um, I guess they must have contracted Dean Martin. He probably said, man, you got to play my music throughout this, these movies. You want me in this shit. So that's what they would do. His shit really sounded out of place in that type of movie. But the contract is the contract. But apparently they were hit movies. But I'm mentioning this because, you know, this is part of those late 60s movies I was trying to look at. Uh, four of them. They're supposed to make a fifth. But Sharon Tate, that was her last movie, The Wrecking Crew, which was the last movie in the series, too. From reading on it, it said Dean Martin didn't want to do it because she uh, couldn't be around. But he looked old, too old to be playing this kind of character anyway. He looked at least twice the, the age of these females going around always getting horny off of these females. Obviously, James Bond influence. Um, so Sharon Tate, she died after this uh, movie. Bruce Lee choreographed. I, I said some of this on the Facebook. He choreographed the movie, which I didn't know. And you could see the difference between that one and the other because the other movies just have generic fight scenes. But this one, everybody knew some form of some Kung, Kung Fu type of moves. And Chuck Norris made an appearance uh, in here, too. I said, damn, that's Chuck Norris in the 60s. <laughs> I said, Chuck Norris and Bruce Lee worked on the same movie before they actually... Uh, did the movie together. I said, ain't that something? It's funny how Bruce Lee would die, you know, not long after that, too. I said, that's crazy. That's crazy. But Sharon Tate, she had a nice body, nice behind on her. Nice face, too. But she definitely had an athletic and, and sexy body. She had a nice behind on her. I saw her other movie she was in, Valley of the Dallas. And I said, these are movies I probably should have seen a long time ago. Because I heard, some, you, we all heard of the Sharon Tate Manson shit. Uh, but I never actually saw her movies until, shit, Valley of the Dallas. I think I saw that a month ago. And that wasn't bad. And I got to say, I always hated 60s fashions and hated the cars. But looking at some of this shit. Not all of them now, <laughs> but looking at some of this shit, I'm like, man, that was a color for a decade, even though half of it was in black and white. So you couldn't really see it all unless you were there. I said some of that shit, they had some clothes that, I don't know if people walking around with those clothes every day unless that was just some movie high level shit. But the female with the dresses, I kept saying, man, a lot of those dresses are pretty impressive. You know, you you think award show uh, type shit. And then some of the casual shit with the dresses they had, like superhero boots. A lot of this shit look like superhero shit. And I was thinking to myself, man, that's probably where Marvel Comics got a lot of that shit from. Because that was the style, like Marvel Girl and all that kind of shit. And, you know, any comic book female where they, where they wear the boots and shit. Or, you know, they got the stripes, the lines and all that kind of shit. I'm like, you seeing all that kind of shit in those dresses and shit. And you see the, the ugly 60s shit where they have the prints. You know, they evolved into the loud clothing of the uh, 70s. Now, that's the type of 60s shit I can't like under any circumstances. Even the shit Dean Martin was wearing in there. I, li I like what he was wearing. One of them, he had a red jacket on. Black pants and a yellow or white... Uh, what you call it, a turtleneck. He always had shoes that matched the color of his uh, pants. Like in the last movie, he had lavender pants and lavender suede shoes. I said, that shit, that shit is smooth. And then I was thinking about 80s hip-hop. I'm like, damn, you know when you think about 88 and 68, if you were 30 years old, 40 years old, you remember that shit. The 60s. Then I was thinking about how some of the rappers dress in the 80s. Late 80s in particular. I was like, you know what? Some of them did wear those. Uh, forgot what kind of sweaters you call those. The button down sweaters that open like. Uh, with two bit buttons at the end. On the bottom. Rappers wore those. They just put gold chains on top of them. 
They will wear slacks with shoes, suede shoes that look like the uh, color of the slacks, some of them. So I said, damn, that, that is apparently 60s uh, style. And I guess it makes sense that that shit would, you know, stay over until the, uh, the 80s. Because in, in hindsight, it wasn't really that long ago from 88. Then, you know, they just put a gold chain on. Then you got groups like the Skinny Boys. They wore that sweater, troop sweater with the two uh, button downs. And that shit looked like some shit from the 60s. Rapper B Fats wore that shit. Uh, then you had Force and D's who become a forgotten group. I can't even find this shit on bootleg unless it's MP3. But when I was trying to look them up again, I was like, damn, I forgot they had the uh, the F on the sweaters looking like Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers. <laughs> Which was a dumb move to do, but you know. So the bottom line is a lot of these 60s shit, the, the colors, the females wore hats with their suits, which they did look cute with their various hats. I'm talking about the small hats that go with the dresses and shit. I said, that shit looks, uh, makes females look cool and respectable, even though you know the 60s was a crazy ass decade. And some had elaborate hats. And I said, you know, I take it back what I used to say about the 60s. I used to hate the 60s fashions, but I think I changed my mind now. I think I changed my mind. So, you know, I had to comment on those movies. It was just interesting to see uh, Chuck Norris in the movie because I always wondered where he got his start. For so long, I thought he got his start in The Return of the Dragon. So, the fact that he had a movie before that goes to show that his goal was to become an actor and he didn't... Be just happened to be a martial artist who got invited to do a movie and then he figured I got the acting bug let me just keep it going so his goal was to become an actor <laughs> guess that's the way it is for all of them uh so with that then this is like the, uh, the length of a movie god damn so yeah so that's what I watched the 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 Dean Martin. I think that's the first, aside from that Rat Pack shit with Jerry Lewis. I don't think I've ever seen any Gene, Dean Martin movies. That was, I think that was another thing that made me say, I might as well check it out. So I watched those, watched that uh, Planet of the Apes. Planet of the Apes was good, but I wouldn't watch it again. But I couldn't help but notice... They made, what is it called? The Bonobo Chimpanzee, which are those bigger muscular ones is usually black looking, usually. And the gorillas, they, they made them the aggressors. Couldn't help but notice that. And the white chimps with the red-headed orangutan, you know, they, they made them the philosophical, noble, upstanding uh, <laughs> ones. I'm just saying, I couldn't help but notice that. Especially when they had the voices, uh, black people. It looks like everybody that voiced the voices were, uh, British too, by the way. Stealing people's jobs. Yeah, if people, black and white, can't even act in their own Hollywood, goddamn. Shit is crazy. So, with that, I think I said all I had to say. Tariq Nasheed, I don't like him taking my shit, but, you know, it is what it is. I'm still trying to get at him. Uh, but Seti, I liked him. I respected him to a degree, except for this overabundance of African shit, which he seems to be falling back on. When people fall back on something that they stood fast on, it's either that they're adapting, getting educated, or they realize that they were lying and changing their style. To adapt with the latest trends, which is, uh, you know, everybody with the indigenous uh, thing. And they figure, well, you know what? We ain't got no choice. We can't keep kicking this pan-African shit. We're going to have to tell the truth about this shit at some point. So that's probably what they're doing. People like Seti. He says, I've been talking about this stuff a long time. He did talk about the Olmecs. 
uh, long ago. I'll give him that. Uh, he didn't really talk about too much else deviating from Africanness long ago because he still sticks to that African shit. He never criticized Caribbeans. And I'm sure he won't criticize Marcus Garvey because if you could criticize Jamaicans, then you should be able to uh, criticize Marcus Garvey. Now, Romans. Afrocentrics, they don't really talk about Romans too much. But Seti, I don't want to say he took it from me, but I got another channel on Facebook and I had a channel on YouTube that used the Caracalla uh, picture. And for people who don't know, I use the Caracalla. Number one, it's a good trick for white supremacists, but they usually know who he is anyway. But I used him because he represents a black man in Rome. Roman Emperor. That's why I used him. To show you that black people are in places besides Africa. But see, people like Seti, they got to talk about him and say, <clears throat> matter of fact, he contradicted himself. He said they were African, could have been mixed breeds, but they're still Cro Magnon. I'm like, how can you say that? Is it because they were Roman emperors? See, that's, that's that, 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 when he was talking about that, that's what made me say, you acknowledge that they're mixed, but you still call them the white man. But I thought all African people were all African people. And his father was September Severus who did come from Africa. So that was an actual African person. Libya. That's why you got to peel the layers back. Things were different at different times. Some people didn't arrive at certain times. And some people did, and then they didn't stay there long enough to mix. Or kill. Caracalla killed his brother Gita for the throne and as mean looking as Caracalla was he was still a bisexual too by the way mess with little boys I think he built made a statue of his uh, lover gay lover little boy in uh, Egypt I was watching some documentary they talked about that shit I said damn you, you see the Caracalla looks so rough and, and tough was doing some nasty stuff. Different world. Now you got all these uh, leaders now doing all this shit. This fruity rainbow shit. So apparently they must be. There must have been a tradition that they uh, never stopped. So, you know, it is what, what it is with that. But I'm just saying people like Seti, they, they're kind of hypocritical with that. Same thing with Umar Johnson calling people Africans all the goddamn time. And then saying, um... I don't like interracial relationships. Stop messing with the snow bunnies. Stop messing with the so-called Latinas. Stop messing with the Arab. But then on another occasion, he'll say to my Latina Africans, to my Arab Africans. I'm like, didn't you just say don't mess with these people? And then you say that the, the, the kids that they had together are still African, 100% African. That's what he said. I said, these Pan-Africanists, these Afrocentrists are all out of order, out of whack. That's how you know they're all coon agents. And with Umar Johnson getting involved with these uh, D.L. Hughley and all these other people, that proves he's an agent. Because why would they even deal with him when he offers nothing, has shown nothing? He has a history that he claims exists. He says, "I've my works are shown. I've, I've helped dozens of kids and do this and do get the understanding and went to court 
Where is the works at? We can't prove shit. All we can do is take a stranger's word for it because that's what he is. You don't know him. You just know of him. He started off lying about every damn thing. And slowly but surely, people peeled the onion back. Sometimes like, God damn. Yeah, I guess what hour and 45 minutes of shit would happen. All right, so with that, you get the idea. Umar Johnson's full of shit. These Afrocentrists are full of shit. Pan-Africans, uh, they're full of shit. They can't defend what they say. That's why they don't like being challenged, just like these uh, Professor Smalls and all these other guys. Because they know they're kicking bullshit. And even Tariq Bay, they don't like being challenged either. Tariq Bay is funny. Oh, you oh you want to uh, debate me? Uh, uh, email me. I mean, what the fuck kind of shit is that? Email me. Shit, man, you doing a live show? Let's, let's get it on right now. Says, you know what you're talking about. And you stand by what you're talking about. You can do it right now. Now, if you don't know what you're talking about, and you know you know that you're lying, you can't do shit. So with that on my